So you, you introduced the world to a concept <laughs> back in I the 70s. I don't know if I was the first. You know, it wasn't something I invented or came up with. It was really, this is how people were describing their experience. And because what we were finding in our research and developing this for the measure and all these kind of things is that there were these three interrelated components and they could sort of come out in different patterns. But when you had a sort of a really negative profile on all three of them, that's really what we were calling burnout, not just being exhausted. Briefly, could you just tell me what those three components are? So uh, the exhaustion, the cynicism, this negative, hostile, you know, thing about the job, and then really a negative thing about yourself. You know, I made a mistake. I, I shouldn't be here. You know, I'm, I've ruined my life. I'm, I'm incompetent. I've done things I'm not proud of. I mean, one, of so, the, one of the yeah. fascinating things, uh, Christine, I must say about burnout is that intuitively you think it's, it's overwork, it's exhaustion, but you're saying it's, it's actually, it's much more than that. It's not about just overwork. It's about... You, you feel this kind of enmity to, towards what you do and almost a kind of a sort of disregard for people's welfare that you're entrusted with. Yeah. Is it, is it almost the jobs where you're perhaps have more of a kind of moral value to it? You know, if you're working in healthcare or teaching rather than just say Wall Street about making money, right. where you think there's a, there's a kind of moral value to what you do, is that, does that make you more prone to burn out, then I'm just in this for the money. Now, what's interesting recently in healthcare, for example, um, I've I've been hearing from people who say, "Oh no, it's you know, people are all talking about burnout. That's not it. It's it's you know, that's not that's not the problem. That's because you've got too many hours of work, and you have to then go home and do more hours doing electronic medical records, and you know, you never get away, et cetera, et cetera. It's moral injury." that comes about because of what the system and the job is forcing you to do, which is to spend less time with patients, to not do things you know the patient needs because there isn't enough money, equipment, you know, whatever, all those kind of things. Actually, what they're talking about is moral injury was in the, you know, description of burnout from the very beginning. So what's happened in recent years, and certainly in, in some professions more than others, is they kind of make, try to simplify it and say, it's just exhaustion. And exhaustion is linked to workload, overload, you know, high demands, low resources, you don't have enough time, everything to get it done. Can that make you stressed out? Yes, can it make you tired, not think straight? Absolutely, you know, all of that other kind of thing. And what they're saying is, is a you know, because of all of that, we then end up with moral injury as this other thing. And that's the important part. For me, moral injury has been there from the beginning. That's what burnout is really about. By by moral injury, do you almost mean that you feel like you're you're letting yourself down? Other and other people down. These people aren't actually saying, "I've turned to this person who hates human beings." I'm actually dying inside, but I've got to do. I've got a hundred people, and am I going to spend time chatting and doing all these things? No. Am I going to cut corners? Yes. Am I going to get out of here because I need to? chart that I've done a hundred. Yeah. Okay. So, um, there is that, that kind of the cynicism leads to this where you're doing in a sense, the bare minimum rather than your very best in order to take care and meet whatever, you know, kind of demands are. Um, and yeah, it, it takes a toll for sure on the people. If you were trying to uh, stave off burnout, and you were put in charge of, say, a police force, and they said you've got carte blanche to try and get rid of burnout. What changes would you make to the way the police force is run to try and mm -hmm. to try and bring down the, the the levels of burnout? I would say you have to do as much to figure out what is the problematic things going on that is causing a misfit or a mismatch between the work environment and the people in it. And the research so far has identified at least six areas in which if you see real, you know, mismatches, imbalances going on there, you're going to see burnout down the road. Those six areas, one has to do with the workload. A second one has to do with how much say, control, choice you have about what you do. Uh, the third is the reward, the recognition. Um, turned out 
recognition, social recognition, turns out to be a lot more important than just money or benefits. Um, the community in the workplace. Uh, fifth area that's been really interesting is fairness. Whatever the policies, whatever the way we do things, that they're implemented fairly in terms of who gets what job or what assignment, who gets what opportunity to do something new, promotion, corner office, you know, whatever it happens to be. And then the last one um, is values and meaning uh, in terms of the work you're doing. And if you're in a job where, you know, you have to preach one thing and practice something else or where there's unethical, you know, kinds of things going on. Uh, yeah, uh, people can say, I, 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 you know, can't look at myself in the morning going into work and doing what I have to do, you know, which is not a, unrelated to the moral injury issue, you know, in that sense. At any rate, to go back to your question, um, burnout is really much more about what are those chronic stressors and particularly so far that we found in those six areas. Um, so I would be spending time trying to figure out in any, whether it's police force or a clinic or a school or whatever, what's working well in those six areas and what's not working so well. And is there a place we could start? And they can be small. And it's, it's you know, you go for the low-hanging fruit. You, you do the little things, the first things, the, the things that are not so difficult to do, that are not too expensive, that are customized to us, you know. Um, and, uh, and those can actually make a big difference. Uh, one of the areas is all about recognition and reward, that you get positive feedback when you do something well. And there are a number of these professions in healthcare and human services, et cetera, where you get very little feedback at all that's positive. You'll hear a lot when it's negative. But when I would ask people, say in the interviews, you know, so tell me, you know, about what's not working, whatever, tell me what a good day is like. And the answer would always be something like no screamers, no problems, no complaints. And it's not a positive thing. It's the absence of a constant negative thing. It's like the best day they can imagine is that nothing bad happens, you know. And for the, for the individual, although this is a systemic problem, for the individual, if they're feeling, if you're feeling burnt out, if you're feeling exhausted and negative and yeah. blaming yourself, yeah. what can you do? What can you do? Well, hopefully what you can do, but I have to, I say this with caution because I'm, I'm hearing from people that this is sometimes more difficult to do rather than easier. Um, and that is to begin to connect and communicate with other people like yourself in your unit or, you know, wherever, or people doing similar kind of work and figuring out how to work out some better solutions and support each other and, you know, come up with ideas that we can implement or do something about. So there's a sense in which we actually have more autonomy to redesign and rejigger uh, what we're doing. And in a time of coronavirus where everything is going to have to be redesigned, the schools are not going to look the same. You know, the hospitals are not going to look the same. Offices are not going to look the same. I mean, there's just going to be... I mean, this is a chance to take advantage of, gee, all the things we know that contribute to an unhealthy workplace. Maybe this is our chance to start making some of those first steps towards making it a little bit better. 